Well, it's the 8th now. I'm finally getting caught up on videos. This is the last of the videos from uh, like three days ago. I took three days off, stopped filming so I can stop making more work for myself since I was having a hard time keeping up. And um, now I'm going to start filming again. So I think it'd be a good time for an update. Uh, also, I'm filming on a higher setting on the camera. I went through the settings and saw I was recording on second to lowest setting. So I did the high setting, and I'm going to see what that's like. Hopefully, the files aren't too massive. This I'm trying to make things easier on myself and not record so much, and try and just get what's important. Because then my computer. It takes hours for it to do this. And, um. There's no internet right here either. I found that it's kind of a little difficult to upload every day because I was trying to keep the video somewhat current, but then I got like three days behind. But there's just not enough internet. There's not enough internet spots with fast enough Wi Fi to make that happen. So. I'm getting the last video made, I'm going to upload this, and then maybe even get this uploaded today so I'm back on track and you guys can have an update. I'm back in uh, Vancouver. When I went up to the rest stop, I continued north for a little ways and found a... I think I got that clip in here of that boondocking spot. It was by the freeway. Real noisy spot, but there's Wi-Fi. I got a few videos uploaded right there. Um, and then we got chased out by the police. I got a knock on my door, and he's like, "Well, you guys have been here long enough. Gotta go." I go, "Okay." That was it. He's a real nice guy. Just, you know, you've been here long enough. I was like, "Wasn't you know, wasn't gonna argue." We was there, I think, for like three or four days, and then the guys before me, I think they were there a, a bit longer because I recognize them. Um, and there's four of us. So anyway, came back into Vancouver, went up to the Walmart, stayed the night there. And it's now 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm waiting here on one of these side streets again, kind of where other semi-trucks park. And, um, and the neighborhood on the other side of me, so I'm just kind of hanging out waiting for shocks to show up. This is I'm by in O'Reilly Auto Parts and I pulled my shock and I'm gonna go in and match it because for the second time now I've been given the wrong shocks and so we reordered them and they won't be here till 2 o'clock so that's what I'm doing, I'm kinda of just hanging out um, a big thanks to whoever told me about the battery charging thing that motor alternators are meant to charge both battery banks. I've been doing that. I found out this switch right here was um, had a wire going up under the hood and it was not connected to anything. And for the longest time, I um, had no idea what it was for. And so I think it was for running the relay that connects the ignition system to the house system and lets the batteries charge. And wow, that charges them so quick. Compared to running this thing, which I got from Walmart, this was uh, to replace my other one, which is a plastic, tiny little thing, and it was actually smelling kind of burnt and not doing, it was getting really hot, so I got something that was kind of meant for charging batteries. That way I can charge with the generator and charge when I have an outlet to charge from. Um, and but that it was just I was running that generator all freaking day, and I couldn't keep up with that and what I was doing, so I've since. Stop leaving the lights on. I've gotten so much better at just using my laptop battery and charging that during the day when there's sun. I have a spare laptop battery too, so I'll switch them out here soon because um, it's, I think, halfway through its cycle. It, the screen goes off when it's on battery power, and I'm going to let it do that. I'm so conscious of all the power I use now. It's nuts. I mean, it's cool. It's really eye-opening to pay attention to what I'm consuming power and water and everything um, and so yeah I've been using that switch that switch I flip it on like uh, like the guy said in the comment to go disconnect the ignition battery which I do because I have a little disconnect thing 
so that way that battery does not drain itself into a dead house battery bank because that's what it's doing if I flip that on without disconnecting the ignition battery um, the next time I start the RV it has a hard time starting because it drained it so much um, so big thanks to whoever that I can't remember the name I'll put it I'll look it up and put it in the video because I appreciate that I appreciate all the help you guys gave me to everyone I'm not I can't think of right now tell them you know helpful words and stuff you guys are awesome um, so the battery bank is all yeah finally got the battery bank charged and just letting the solar kind of top it off it's pulling in almost an amp uh, charging my phone that's kind of where I charge also this camera Handy little, handy little charge controller like this thing. So battery banks are charged. Back on top of that, that was kind of stressful because the furnace won't run without it. And I've been using this catalytic heater, but it uses a bottle a night, and that's like it's like three dollars a night, three something, almost four dollars a night. I don't remember what it was, six something for two of them. Um, and I don't like it that they put off moisture too I think pretty sure the byproduct of burning propane is moisture right my humid my windows get extremely humid I think it puts off quite a bit of moisture and I don't really like them so I st I'm kind of sticking to the furnace got a solar panel ordered 165 watt that will be here on the 13th. I'm going to switch that out with this older 50 watt, 29 year old ancient solar panel. Hopefully that will give me a little more amps to charge the batteries with during the day. Um, I got antifreeze and I got 10 more feet of hose, heater hose, and two um, T fittings to redo all that and hook up my heaters again. I found out that the the front heater up here um, does actually work. It just does not work on high setting. So I was thinking it was dead and I didn't bother hooking or trying to get heater hose back then because I thought, you know, my heater doesn't work. But if I flip you know click it down one speed it actually works just fine uh, except for the air conditioning of course so um, which is awesome because I have am having a problem with the windows fogging up it has been a humid nasty depressing just soggy week it's been non-stop just crap weather it's just getting to me a little bit but I feel good I got shocks ordered some proper shocks that fit I am so pissed at myself for even trying to put those on. I was just wanted it to work. I spent all that money and there's no sending it back. I just wanted it to work and I got desperate. And I put it on all kind of weird and attached it to like the outside of the bracket and stuff and like it's supposed to be. But oh well, it wasn't too bad of a fix. It's done and over with. I got the proper shocks ordered. And we're gonna make sure I just pulled this shock off yet off a little bit ago and I'm gonna go in and make sure those match up this time okay and then yeah the 13th we'll get the solar put on and after that I'm probably going to head south a few hours um, into Oregon and go to a relative's house who's offering me 15 bucks an hour to do some farm type work and cut down some trees and stuff like that because I need money I'm running out of my tax return so I've got to do something so that's probably the plan and I'm gonna take some time to get this work done and probably won't film until the drive south that way I can just focus on fixing up the RV and try not to and try to stay focused. So, that's where I'm at today. Waiting for shocks. Need to do some repairs. Need to wait on mail for a solar panel. And then head.
head south to do some work. Get my heater soaked up back up because there's also a rear heater too. I wanna, I wanna start using it again because when I sit here and let this thing run, to charge the battery bank, because that's what I do now. It's such a better option than using the generator. Um, I want to be able to heat up, heat everything up while the engine's running. Might as well. So if you run the heater in the back, run the heater in the front, keep everything warm while the batteries charge. I think that'll be a great setup. I'm kind of excited for that. Then all I have to do is worry about putting gas in the tank of the RV. And the generator can just be used when I want to use the microwave and the toaster. I just made breakfast. I would have loved some toast, but I didn't want to. That thing's so loud. I'm going to hold off on making the sound box just yet. I may even just get some mattress pad and make some kind of boards because most of the sound comes out the left side and I was thinking if I just put a board on that spot and put some pad on the inside and just kind of take the, the edge off might be a whole lot better but these repairs are important I need to get on top of this stuff the shocks and uh, and I got about an hour to go into rallies which has been just awesome people for me very helpful Every time I go in there, I'm just so much stress. So much of the stress is just relieved, just getting the right parts instead of fumbling around online and ordering the wrong stuff and then getting stuck with it because you got to pay the shipping to get a return. It's ridiculous. I should have never done that in the first place. So now we're getting the right shocks and uh, get back on the road here. So around the 13th, I'll be heading south. Go do some work. try and film some of these projects coming up here I'm gonna start filming only with this camera as well too to so I'm not trying to combine two different footages from two different cameras <clears throat> just to make things a little bit easier so anyway thanks for watching as always stay tuned well I've got a new adventure coming and then now uh, we're gonna get to know that part of Oregon a little bit and find their boondocking spots I've got enough figured out up here because I will not stay down there. My peel box is up here in Vancouver and this is my home. I don't want to leave here for too long. So I'm going to go down there. It'll be a nice uh, taste of travel, traveling in this thing, like doing some somewhat long distance, you know, good, good few hour drive. This is some, you know, I'd like, there's a lot of the country I'd like to see. So yeah, stay tuned guys. Have a good day.